You project yourself onto your deathbed or deathbed announcement, and you realize, okay, what if I only had a few days left to live? And I look back upon my life. Am I happy with who I am, who I've become, or at least what my attitude has been throughout who I've become and who I've been? Have I prioritized? Have I paid enough attention to what is the intention of my life? Looking back on your life, on your deathbed, not having any time left to do anything, just two, three days left. Or maybe not even three days left. What if you had 10 minutes left? See, so you can play with this imagination as you see fit. But what if you had 10 minutes left? And you had to do a quick life review right now. And you'd see yourself in all honesty, in all transparency, with full awareness, with nothing to hide or defend from yourself anymore, because what's the point? You're no longer living for the judgment of others because you're about to die, so who cares? So now you can be totally honest with yourself and even with others. Of course, you're about to pop out, and you can't take anything with you, including your relationships. So looking back then, are you happy with your prioritization in life? Are you happy with your focus, with your intentionality? And don't judge whatever answer arises, whatever feeling arises. It might be a mixture. It might be like, overall, yes, I forgive myself, I love myself, I'm a proud of myself. And I wish this would have happened a little differently. I wish I would have prioritized this. I wish I would have apologized here or there or prioritized perhaps teachings like this or your calling, expressing your calling, acting on your passion and so on and so forth. Either way, don't judge what you perceive. We want to do this exercise in a total atmosphere of forgiveness. It's very important. And forgiveness applies to self just as much as it applies to other selves. For your information, when I use the term other selves, I simply mean others, but since they are ultimately yourself, they are more accurately called other selves. They are the rest of yourself from that meta perspective. All right, so before you came to Earth, so to speak, to kind of use a, yeah, a new agey angle, if you will, before you came to Earth, what do you sense was your intention? What did you want to carry out or radiate or share? And what did you want to learn? Can you get a sense of that just in the next minute intuitively? Just by relaxing not wanting anything from anything, accept an answer from your higher self to this question. But other than that, you don't want anything. And so kind of curiously ask yourself with a very open mind an open heart and a transparent state of mind. What did I most, what's the quality that I most wanted to learn? to perfect, to fine tune, to balance here in this life? What have been some of my major, almost thematic lessons or cyclical patterns of learning, of mistakes, of learning, of mistakes, of learning, of mistakes, of learning? Can I detect a pattern there? What am I most stubborn in, for instance? Because that's usually a good sign of what you're here to learn is what you are most stubborn against or in. Which lesson have you had to learn more than once? That will be a giveaway for what your sort of theme of learning is for this particular life. It will give you a general area to look in. What, have been, what has been the most recurring lesson for you? 
the most recurring theme. And for a lot of you, you'll find that it has something to do with relationships in one way, shape or form. Of course, everything ultimately is a relationship, even when it's with a house or with money or with career or, and obviously with people. But for most of us, there is a lot to learn in relationship with other human beings. Not for all of us. Some people do choose different themes. They do choose different primary lessons. But for the majority of people, a lot of the lessons that we wish to learn are not about interacting with humans so much, but they are certain qualities that we practice, that we wish to learn and balance and realize. And we do it through the vehicle of human interaction, because that's the most potent, the most powerful, the most intimate way of learning these particular qualities. Let's say patience. Relationship can be a perfect way to learn patience. Or love and forgiveness can be a perfect quality to learn through the vehicle of an abusive relationship or a less than ideal dynamic. So it's not ultimately about the relationships themselves, but it's about, again, what you learn from it, because you won't take the relationship with you when you die, not in this form, not in this physical package, at least. The connection will survive, but the package will disappear. So what you will take with you, however, is everything that you've evolved into as a result of the vehicle of that human relationship. So see if you can note down or identify what are some of your themes here? What are some of your biggest lessons in this life that you really want yourself to pay attention to from a, if you will, higher consciousness or higher self sort of level, from a meta perspective, from before your birth, if you're willing to accept for a second that you're incarnating with an intention and that you are already an evolved being before you entered this life. You're not just a physical creature that just appeared out of nowhere and somehow you are this smart, intelligent and self-aware that happened through many, many, many cycles of evolution. You got to where you were as a soul and now you've chosen a vehicle for expression, for learning, for incarnating, which is your current body and the mind that sort of developed around that body. So if you're all willing to accept this hypothesis, which to me is a reality, it's just the way that this works, this illusion, then what for you specifically was your main intention to learn? What did you really want to add to your soul? in terms of a balancing aspect, a balancing quality. So if perhaps you were a little hasty in your prior experiences, you are teaching yourself patience to find rest and happiness and contentment and fulfillment in the moment as it is without it needing to change into anything. That's just one example. It's a very general example. It's an example of something that a lot of us are learning, no matter what theme we're choosing to explore. Patience love, willingness, the training of our will, the honing of our will, the focusing of our will, becoming more intentional, remembering what we are more often, learning to love, learning to be generous, learning to feel safe, regardless of what occurs, to know our safety, to have faith. These kind of qualities are very general, but nevertheless, those are the universal qualities, the main, the primary types of qualities that every being is here to master in the end. So a lot of these qualities will be part of your theme. And then in addition, you'll see more specific expressions of your theme. You'll be able to observe that through this type of an exercise by viewing, considering your life as a whole and kind of rewinding to some of the core memories, some of the challenges and see what is it that I specifically am trying to learn here. What unique combination or flavor of patience, of love, of generosity, of forgiveness, of awareness, of clarity, of compassion? What quality, what kind of unique combination of these qualities am I attempting to improve at, if you will, in this school of the universe? 